Here is a diagram of some of the most common types of brain herniation syndromes. With subfalcine herniations, brain tissue extends under the falx in the supratentorial cerebrum, causing small reactive pupils and contralateral leg paralysis. Transtentorial descending herniations, also known as uncle herniations, are the most common type, caused by the medial temporal lobe pushing downward into the posterior fossa through the incisora, leading to ipsilateral pupil dilation, contralateral hemiparesis, and decerebrate posturing. Transtentorial bilateral, also known as central herniations, results from downward displacement of the cerebral hemispheres and basal nuclei compressing and displacing the diencephalon and midbrain rostrocaudally through the tentorial notch. This leads to medium-sized fixed pupils, stupor and coma, decorticate posturing, Cheney-Stokes respirations, and diabetes insipidus. Transtentorial ascending herniations occurs when the infratentorial mass effect protrudes upwards to compress the midbrain, which can present clinically with nausea, vomiting, and progressive stupor. Tonsillar herniations are when the cerebellar tonsils protrude below the foramen magnum, compressing the medulla and upper cervical spinal cord, leading to hypertension, bradycardia, bradypnea, and respiratory arrest, a constellation of symptoms we often refer to as a Cushing reflex. And finally, there are transcalvarial herniations, which are the rarest of the bunch and usually the result of penetrating injuries to the head and skull, which leave a defect or opening for herniation to occur. As a result of this mechanism, signs and symptoms can vary, depending on whether or not the brain tissue was involved in the penetrating injury or not, and also the location of the brain that is involved.